Good afternoon, Dr. Sibiziak and fellow students. Welcome to the first presentation of the year. My name is Ben Brito, and my fellow group members are Blake Holtby, Jacob Robinson, Peter Rossi, Malharsen Solanke, and Joseph Wood. We will be talking about some engine types that are different from the ones you would find in your average passenger vehicle. These include engines with better cycles, such as the Atkinson and Miller. We will also talk about two engines that are very different from your standard spark ignition or compression ignition engines, these being the Stirling and Wankel engines. For each engine, we will provide some history on them, a general overview of how they function, the different theories behind them, and some applications they might have. The Wankel engine is an engine that operates similarly to a typical piston engine and utilizes the auto cycle. However, the Wankel engine uses a rotor and an eccentric shaft instead of a piston and a crankshaft. Due to this, Wankel engines are more often referred to as rotary engines. Similar to a common piston engine, the Wankel is a four-stage cycle, including intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust. As such, the PV diagram of the Wankel is very similar to what one would see in a piston engine using the auto cycle. Instead of a reciprocating piston, the Wankel uses a moving three-sided rotor that rotates around an eccentric shaft. The, this rotor creates three pockets between the sides of the rotor and the housing, which each act as a combustion chamber. As you can see in this animation, the air-fuel mixture is brought in from an intake port, then compressed before it is ignited and exhausted out another port. In a typical four-stroke engine, there is only one ignition for every two rotations of the output shaft. In a rotary, however, there are three ignitions for each rotation. This allows a much greater power output at low speeds and in a very small package in comparison to a piston engine. The Wankel engine was developed by the company NSU, which later became NSU Wankel, in collaboration with Dr. Felix Wankel. The first versions of this device were used as a supercharger for NSU's motorcycle engines and were later adapted into a standalone engine. The first working Wankel engine, the DKM, made by NSU in 1957, was a rotary engine in which the rotor and housing both spun, which differs from modern rotary engines that have the rotor and shaft spinning with the housing stationary. This concept meant that each part of the engine rotated on its own axis, enabling it to reach extremely high speeds up to 17,000 RPM. This design was far too complex due to its rotating housing, so development was halted. NSU then began developing the KKM Wankel engine later in 1957, which had a stationary housing and rotating rotor and shaft. The KKM was made with several variants and used for several years in small applications such as lawnmowers and small boats before being installed in a car. The most famous use of the Wankel engine is likely the twin rotor used in Mazda's RX-7. Rolls-Royce produced a four-rotor diesel engine in the 1970s which was intended for use for aircrafts. This engine used a secondary Wankel engine as a form of supercharger to increase compression but keep compression ratio lower. There have been talks of Mazda producing a new rotary engine for use in their hybrid drivetrains. We will now move on to the Atkinson cycle. It uses a different thermodynamic process than the traditional auto cycle. Its expansion ratio is larger than the compression ratio, and this improves fuel efficiency but reduces power output. It has a reduced overall volume of air to fuel mixture in the cylinder and a larger power stroke resulting in more energy extraction. The Atkinson cycle has less resistance during compression stroke resulting in less power being used to run the actual engine itself. The cycle was invented by British engineer James Atkinson, whose goal was to improve the four-stroke auto combustion engine. The first patented engine he produced in 1882 had the ability to change the length of the piston stroke by the use of a multi-link connecting rod between the piston and flywheel. 
It was designed to provide efficiency at the expense of power density and is used in some modern hybrid electric applications. It is also called the BARDA engine. The Atkinson cycle delays the intake valve's closing event until the piston has completed approximately 20 to 30 percent of its upward travel on the compression stroke. As a result, a portion of the intake charge is pushed back into the intake manifold by the rising piston so the cylinder is never completely filled, causing the low speed reduction of power and a loss in torque when compared to an equivalent auto cycle engine. The advantages of the cycle are shown after ignition occurs, when the piston starts descending on the expansion or power stroke. Consistent with James Atkinson's original thinking, the shortened intake stroke, along with a full length expansion stroke, maximizes the work output of every droplet of fuel. This cycle is used in many hybrid vehicles built by Toyota, Honda, and General Motors. Some non-hybrid vehicles can switch between the Atkinson and Auto cycles depending on operating conditions. Shown here are some examples of engines which can be found in some of the cars we might find on the road today. The Atkinson cycle is sometimes used in conjunction with a supercharger to improve torque output. This is called the Miller cycle, which I will discuss next. In 1957, the American engineer Ralph Miller devised an ingenious plan to improve upon the Atkinson cycle and compensate for the low torque and horsepower inherent at lower RPM in the Atkinson cycle. By adding a supercharger, the compression was effectively increased over the shorter effective stroke length. During expansion, the full stroke is utilized to maximize combustion efficiency. From stages 5 to 1, the intake valve remains open and the pressure in the cylinder remains the same as the piston moves from bottom dead center to approximately midway through the stroke. From stages 1 to 2, the normal compression cycle resumes to top dead center and the ignition begins. By optimizing the pseudo stage between 5 and 1 via a supercharger, more power can be realized from stages 3 to 4 than would be seen in a conventional Atkinson cycle. As the demand for better fuel economy and performance becomes a necessity, we have seen the introduction of the Miller cycle in production automotive applications. The 1994 Mazda Millennia is perhaps the first most notable usage. The root style supercharger can be seen under the throttle body in between the two cylinder heads. Hot air engines, also known as Stirling cycle engines, were initially invented by Guillaume Amantons. He built his first hot air engine in 1699, which later became known as the Stirling engine. Therefore, he is also considered the inventor of the Stirling cycle. Later in 1816, the first working hot air engine was built and patented by Robert Stirling, who is also considered to be one of the fathers of the Stirling cycle engine. In 1818, an engine with two horsepower was built to pump water at an Arshire quarry. It continued to work for some time until a careless attendant allowed it to overheat. The conclusion was then made that this engine could only work on low pressures and could only be adopted for low power. Luckily, in 1843, Robert Sterling and his brother James developed a new and improved configuration, which resulted in increased power output and was able to drive all the machinery at Dundee Iron Foundry. With this success, it became known that the inventors could not only increase fuel efficiency and power, but also create a safer alternative to the present steam engines which caused injuries and fatalities in the explosions of boilers. Unfortunately, the Sterling brothers suffered many cylinder failures and the Dundee Iron Foundry was returned to steam power. Sterling engines are also known as external combustion engines due to the fact that the fuel source is burnt outside of the engine cylinder. Stirling engines are found to be very useful when used in combined heat and power systems, which not only increases the thermal efficiency, but can also be scaled as small as 1 kilowatt, resulting in low maintenance, low noise, and low emissions. This makes them ideal for residential combined heat and power systems. 
Another major advantage of the Stirling engine is that it can be operated on any fuel. The ideal Stirling cycle comprises of four cycles. Isothermic compression, heat addition at constant volume, isothermal expansion, and heat rejection at constant volume. So far, when we consider different cycles, we see that all the exhaust energy is lost. But in the case of the Stirling engine, a part of the exhaust energy is redirected back to the cycle. This allows for energy regeneration and significantly increased efficiency. The Stirling engine is driven by the cycle in which air or working fluids are compressed and expanded at different temperatures to convert heat energy into mechanical energy. To be precise, the Stirling engine consists of a working fluid in a closed cycle, which means the working fluid is permanently contained in the thermodynamic system. However, Stirling is differentiated from other closed cycle hot air engines by using a regenerator. Furthermore, the Stirling engine can be classified into one of two of the basic categories. The kinematic Stirling engine is used to drive a generator using the crank arrangement that converts reciprocating piston motion to a rotational output in which mechanical linkages are used to actuate the displacer. Free piston Stirling engines do not consist of any rotating parts. In the majority of these systems, the displacer is driven by the pressure variation in the space between the pistons, and the connecting rod fixed to the piston draws the output power. Applications of Stirling engines range from mechanical propulsion to heating and cooling to electrical generation systems. For example, the ST5 developed by Stirling Technologies Incorporated produces 5 horsepower and can drive a 3 kilowatt hour generator or a centrifugal water pump. Focusing on the renewable energy sector, the parabolic mirror and the Stirling engine can be very useful to convert solar energy into electricity more efficiently than compared to photovoltaic cells. Lastly, in an electrical power generation plant, there is high potential for nuclear-powered Stirling engines in which the steam turbines of nuclear power plants can be replaced with a Stirling engine in order to increase the efficiency and can be helpful in the reduction of radioactive byproducts. As we approach the end of our presentation, we will make some comparisons between the cycles, beginning with the Miller, Atkinson, and Otto cycles. The Miller and Atkinson cycles are not that different from the Otto cycle. The main difference with both cycles is that the intake valves are open for a slightly longer period during the compression stroke when compared to the Otto cycle. Additionally, the use of a multi-link connecting rod further improves fuel efficiency. The Miller cycle makes use of a supercharger so that during the compression stroke, the air-fuel mixture is compressed against the compressor from the supercharger rather than the compression ratio. In the Atkinson cycle, the intake valve stays open like the Miller cycle, but only to reduce fuel consumption. The valve is open to reduce pressure, making it easier for the piston to compress the air-fuel mixture. This increases fuel efficiency but reduces peak power without the supercharger, so it can be useful when paired with an electric motor in a hybrid vehicle. Both the Wankel and Stirling engine are quite different from your average internal combustion engine. When comparing the Wankel engine with an average internal combustion engine, a Wankel engine has fewer parts with only the rotors, casing, and output shaft compared to the many parts of a standard internal combustion engine. Another difference is that Wankel, or rotary engines, run much smoother than normal in internal combustion engines because the rotor is always spinning in the same direction and not constantly changing directions like the pistons in a normal engine would. The Stirling engine is even more different than the average internal combustion engine. It has a fixed amount of gas inside the cylinder and there are no intake or exhaust valves. The Stirling engine is not powered by an explosion of air and fuel inside the cylinder. It uses an external heat source. The lack of combustion makes a Stirling engine much quieter than a gas or diesel engine. Since a Stirling engine uses an external heat source, it takes time for it to warm up and produce power. This means that a Stirling engine is very slow in response to change in input. 
Both the Wankel and Sterling engines have some pros and cons that allow them to excel in different areas. The Wankel is a better comparison with a normal internal combustion engine because it has the potential to be used in the average car, whereas the Sterling engine is better suited for other uses uh, such as submarines where a quiet engine is more important. In conclusion, we have introduced some of the alternative cycles and engine types that are being used today. They each provide an increase in efficiency compared to an average internal combustion engine in their own unique ways. If you have any questions, uh, please direct them to the chat or use your microphone now. Thank you.